There are thousands of DOS games. Most of them are terrible. I play one selected at random with a 20 minute time limit and record it live. This is the result. Cyberlore. Very fancy. Cyberlore Studios. Dot com apparently. Wonder if that website's still up. But here is the logo we wanted to see. The ever wonderful New World Computing. A division of the 3DO company. And uh, there's probably going to be a lengthy introduction. But the title speaks for itself. This is Heroes of Might and Magic 2. The Price of Loyalty. Uh, I feel like I missed a cutscene here. Okay. And we're in. And we've got a nice little menu. Oh, some beautiful CD quality music here. That's very nice. Now, quick preamble. I was a massive fan of the Might and Magic series of RPG games by New World Computing. But... I completely suck at turn-based strategies. And this is a turn-based strategy of some repute. So let's see how we go, shall we? This will be an experiment and a half. I've set my timer now. Let's get cracking. New game. So we've got standard game, campaign game, and multiplayer. Uh, should we just try a standard game? We'll go with the original maps. Let's have easy difficulty. Uh, I don't know what this is here. There's there's a way to switch, I guess. Is that... Oh, so you can have a, an all-computer game. Is that what's going on there? No, apparently we can move the man to select our color. I think. Maybe. He only seems to want to go to the orange one. So, let's just stick with that. And random classes, rating 70%. I don't know what that rating means, but you can have all kinds of settings here. And there's map difficulties and stuff. So let's go for one of the small maps. Hard, normal, normal. You know what? I've suddenly realized I should go back. And I should hit new game and campaign game. Original the campaign. all began three years ago. Did they? The passing of the old king, Lord Iron Fist. Hey, I know that the guy. The king left two sons. Roland was good. Oh, King Roland, yes. Yes. I th While this has the same lore as the uh, RPG, then. Choose your lord. Oh, we get to choose. Well, it has to be the, the kindly good Roland. Battle. I greet your pledge of loyalty with gratitude and relief. As yes, you know, yes, yes. Man. Okay. So, we'll skip that, just to get straight into the game and see what happens. Roland needs you to defeat the lords near his castle to begin his war of rebellion against his brother. They are not allied with each other. Well, clearly, because they're fighting. So they will spend most of their time fighting with one another. Yes, that, that seemed self-evident. Victory is yours when you have defeated all of their castles and heroes. So, no awards, no days spent, and... This appears to be the branching storyline here. So, we have a choice of 2,000 gold, a thunder mace, or some gauntlets. I'll take the money and run. Okay. There are three enemy castles to the north. Capture them in the name of Roland, the true king. Okay, we shall attempt to do that. So, we're into the game. And... Uh, the beautiful CD music continues, reminds me of the RPG series, which makes sense because it's the same company. Um, we've got a little horse person here, and uh, presumably by clicking we can move them to the appropriate bits. Now there's some gold there, so double click to uh, you find a small quantity of gold. Okay, cool. Uh, apparently that requires two turns. So, what is this? Kalindra the Wizard. She's got spells and knowledge and she has boars and halflings. 
So this is the person, the, the hero that we're in charge of. Okay. And then we can also click on the castle, I guess. Coraxton. Uh, so there's some sort of, I don't know, turn-based resource thing going on here. Uh, you've got a pile of resources. Uh, everything else is empty. Oh, we can recruit people. Alright. So, there's a little halfling hut there. So, recruit halfling. Presumably, as the game goes on, we can improve matters. Let's put our gold to good use, shall we? We have 12,000 of it. So... Oh, there's only eight available. So, we'll recruit them. And... Exit. Okay. I don't understand what happened there. So, we've got halflings there. Are they guarding the town? Can we, can we not move them? Well, Alright. So, that button... This is... I mean, it, it reminds me of something that has a lot of depth but is quite simple to sort of navigate and it's just a case of figuring everything out. Uh, so we got a kingdom overview uh, and we have an overview of towns and stuff. Halfling, we can dismiss from here as well which is nice. Okay, that's just an overview button. That did nothing. There's no mouse over either so uh, there's a save. That looks like a retreat button. And what does the time thing do? Right, that has advanced us to day two. All right, I'll take that gold. Thank you. And we'll go to that fountain. As you drink the sweet water, you gain luck for your next battle. Oh, thank you. Uh, can we go back to the place and then can we... Oh, we can move. So we've upgraded her army. We have additional halflings, but they're not available, available to train. So we leave the, the uh, ungarrisoned city. There's nobody defending that. And they said to the north, but there's some sort of weird Easter Island-like thing going on there. So I'm going to go down and investigate that on my next turn. Go there. You've found an ancient and weathered stone idol. Kissing it is supposed to be lucky. So you do. The stone is very cold to the touch. <laughs> well, I hope that was a, a beneficiary. Yeah, beneficial. Benefi We'd be the beneficiary of a beneficial kiss. Um, let's just head over here and the turn. Slight skipping of the CD music. Why does that turn into a sword? Oh. A group of peasants with a desire for greater glory wish to join you. Do you accept? Of course. I shall send you to your deaths. What's this place here? Witch's Hut. An ancient and immortal witch living in a hut with bird's legs for stilts teaches you estates for her own inscrutable purposes. Now, estates sounds like... Oh, we got 46 of those guys that wanted to join us. Let's go here. Is is there a way of building estates or something? Oh, we, we can. So, if, if we exit that, you'll see here, castle. We could recruit Fundrax the Barbarian. A level one barbarian with no artifacts. You are recruited, sir. Uh, he's got some goblins there. So is that some kind of mercenary? Cannot recruit. You already have a hero in this town. Okay. Let's build a pen. The pen produces boars. Okay. Well, that was fast. So we can buy those boars. And we can give them to Fundrax. And as you can see, there's, there's an economic management sort of thing going on there. Uh, foundry. Cannot build. Already built here this turn. Right, so it's a turn turn-based system. Okay. 
So, Fundrax, can you... Yes, we now have Fundrax. Fundax, sorry, not Fundrax. What am I chatting about? So, Fundrax the Barbarian will boldly go this way. Well done, Fundrax. Can you get that? He can. You find a small quantity of ore. Fundrax is just marching away here. Right, that's on their second term. There's some folk over there. I'm not sure they're friendly. Okay. Um, do you have any moves left? Yes, you do. Let's head over here. Uh, right, so any other moves we'll take to the second turn. Now, can we recruit again? We, we have the money. I wonder. Now that Fund... Fundax, Fundrax, whatever, has left, we can recruit a wizard or a sorceress. Let's go with the sorceress. Okay. And she's got a handful of sprites and dwarves. Uh, I guess we can have her head off. Uh, I mean, eventually I'm going to get into combat. You go this way. Oh, what's that? You find a small quantity of gems. Head for that treasure. Okay, I think everybody has exhausted their turn. Because you can see on the left hand side, the turn thing goes down. Uh, what does that do? Right, that's, that's the options menu. Save. What's that? World map, info, stuff like that. This all makes sense. It's, it's all coming together. So, day five. Alright, you can move the character with the arrows. I thought you'd move the map, but you just sort of edge scroll with that. I keep trying to select them on this and I don't need to. Um, go over there. And uh, there's some gold there. Take that. One thousand. And not going to get into combat this round. What, what about you? Right, we can select them just on the pane at the side there. Right, get that treasure. After scarring the area, you fall upon a hidden treasury cache. You may take the gold or distribute the gold to the peasants for experience. We'll take the money. We'll always take the money. There's some sort of well there as well. You drink at the well, supposed to restore your spell points, but you are already at maximum. So if our spell points go down, oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to navigate again. That that doesn't make sense. Okay, um, you sorceress lady. I don't know why I'm double clicking. That doesn't make much sense. Stop doing that, James. Uh, more money, more money, less problems. What is this? You gain control of a sawmill. It will provide you with two units of wood per day. So there's an, e there's an economic sort of overworld thing going on here where we get gold, we take control of areas and there appears to be some baddies there that we'll need to take care of. But I don't think we'll do it this turn. What can you, can you, nah, not quite. What about you? You head that way. Keep double clicking and then, yeah. Okay, that, that was a decent turn. Oh, one or more heroes may still move. Okay. So, we're, you, you can go over here. Do so. Yeah, that's you out of moves. And you apparently still have moved. That's nice of the game to tell you. Hey, you haven't exhausted all your moves here. We can go to the castle and maybe build something here. Um, a foundry? The foundry produces iron golems. Sounds good to me. And then uh, we can we can train a whole pile of people here. No halflings available. Boo. Uh, we can train some iron golems. And is there some boars as well? No, we've recruited all the boars. So is it just a one-off? This is interesting. Mandigal, come join our party and uh, take take these iron golems. We have use of you. 
Ma Mandigal. Ma Man Mandigal, yeah. I got it right. Don't know if it's Mandigal or Mandigal or what. Mandigal sounds j Dutch. Right, what, what is that? Oh, you've... You've exhausted yourself already. Okay, it's combat time. You. Right, what is this? There are... A pile of goblins... On one side... Of... The map. And it looks turn-based. And there's our halflings and peasants. So, we're in control of the boar. Ah, oh, look at that. Nice little walking animation. And they're moving out. Oh no! Goblins do 11 damage. Good luck shines on the, on the boars. Alright, so the boars... They're, they're mostly fodder, but... You know, they can, they can handle it. Shoot the goblins. Sounds like a plan. And luck will shine on us as well. Oh, what a shot. 37 damage. So, take out that thing. Yes. Alright. And then the peasants, they can't shoot. So, they, they can't move much either. Right. Just you head over there some... Um... Right. Is, is there a way to select? Oh, right. It automatically goes to the unit that uh, you have control of. Oh, no. Hey, a good counterattack. So, he only gets one counterattack each go, presumably. Can you shoot from there? Sort of. And luck shines on him again. And it's a good shot. It really is. And take him out. Oh no! Our peasants! Our peasants are done. Boar! Go over there. Uh oh. Yeah, those halflings aren't... Uh, aren't meant to do much. So, we have options here. We can cast a spell. Retreat. Heroes options. Cancel. Let's see what spell we can cast, shall we? Cast a spell. Stone skin. On the halflings. There we go. So, their defense is up. But it won't matter. Because it's a great shot. A glorious victory. For Valor in combat. Kalindra receives 120 experience. So, our, pe our peasants perished. But, we took out, like, a whole pile of goblins. Now... They were guarding something there. Let's have a look at that. You gain control of an ore mine. It will provide you with two units of ore per day. So they, they were guarding an economic resource. Now, she has a limited number of people. So I think discretion here is the better part of valor. I'll send her that way. Right. Now... Let's have another combat. Ah, uh, maybe this is a bad idea. That's a that's a lot of men. Uh, do you do you have magic? No. So he can't cast spells because he's a barbarian. Okay, this should be interesting. Uh. Right. And they, they they can't appear to fire from range either. This could end badly for us. We can auto-resolve by the looks of things in the corner there. And we can also skip. Presumably that's skipping the turn or something. And the uh, the cursor changes. Look at that. Yeah. Attack him head on. Well, that wasn't very effective, was it? Veteran Pikeman. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, my boar's gonna struggle here. He's surrounded. Come on, boar. Hang in there, some. Well, 
you were utterly useless. Fortunately, we still have some goblins. But I don't think we're going to win this. Yeah, we've lost the battle. Your forces suffer a bitter defeat and Fundax abandons your castle. Well, Fundax, you were useless. Utterly useless. So we'll go back to our castle and we'll see what we can do from there. Can't hire anybody. I guess each building only supplies so much and you have to keep uh, building more stuff. Cliff Nest. And there was some interest. Sir Gallant the Knight. Okay. Where's the Cliff Nest? There it is. And we'll recruit some rocks because we can smell what they're cooking. And Sir Gallant, you can have the rocks. And we can't build anymore. So we've replaced the useless Fundax with the much superior Sir Gallant. And he will head off to take out the halflings because I think the pikemen are a bit much. I don't know if damage is persistent. You know, I should probably find that out, shouldn't I? Let's see. You were... Alright, no, you, you still have some forces. My god, is that time up already? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> summation of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Uh, hideously, hideously addictive. Like, oh my word. I, I just, I got completely sucked in. Barely scratched the surface. You know, I was warned about this. Uh, people said to me, you know, James, you could sink easily two, three hundred hours into this and not get bored. And it's like this overworld economic thing with turn-based combat. And it also has this RPG element as your heroes grow and learn. And it's one of the better games I've played on this show. So, massive, massive recommendation. Hearty thumbs up. But I think anybody who's already played any form of Heroes and Might and Magic... A would say, well, yeah, of course it's recommended. And B would probably shake me and say, James... Why the hell have you not played this before? And uh, I'm kicking myself, to be honest. I'm absolutely kicking myself. I should have played this decades ago. But here I am in 2020, and I finally witnessed the greatness that is Heroes of Might and Magic. So, brilliant game. Absolutely stunning. And I think I'll just continue playing now. Oh, and if you like me playing DOS games and want to see more, I do hundreds and hundreds of videos, and uh, some of them are okay to watch, you know. So if you like what you see, feel free to uh, subscribe. Until next time.